first tonight. Warnings that a vulnerable Vladimir Putin could mean a more dangerous and reckless dictator. Defence analysts say the Russian president is now in the most pregnable position of his leadership after the weekend's rebellion by the Wagner Group. Opposition leader Peter Dutton today addressed claims by Russia that two of its fighter jets had to respond to British warplanes approaching its border. Russia claims the military aircraft were intercepted over the Black Sea, but Dutton says we should treat the claims with caution. I suspect we need to be very careful about uh, President Putin's actions now. He'll be trying to flex a muscle and show that he's back in control and scrambling fighter jets will be part of that. Uh, it'll be an optic that he wants to display, that he's back in charge, back in control. He's a strong man and that probably puts him in a very dangerous stage uh, of his presidency. And I hope that he's weakened and I hope that uh, uh, the Russian people can be liberated at some point. But at the moment, uh, he's wounded and he'll be uh, a very difficult and prickly character. Uh, I think we should be very careful about his next moves. The UK Ministry of Defence confirmed three RAF planes were in the area, but described it as a routine operation in international airspace. Overnight, Putin made his first public remarks since the weekend's attempted insurrection. In a televised address, he thanked his nation for standing united and for not letting the rebellion descend into bloodshed. This is treason in the face of those who are fighting on the front. This is a stab in the back of our troops and the people of Russia. These people who are responsible will certainly be brought to justice on behalf of our people. And the punishment for this monstrous activity will be very harsh. Putin also claimed Russia's enemies had a role in this. A suggestion US President Joe Biden rejected. Biden said the US had no involvement in the attempted insurrection. He made the remarks to try and stop Putin blaming the West for the rebellion. We had to make sure we gave Putin no excuse. Let me emphasize, we gave Putin no excuse to blame this on the West or to blame this on NATO. We made clear that we were not involved. We had nothing to do with it. This was part of a struggle within the Russian system. A few hours before Putin's remarks, Wagner mercenary group head Yevgeny Prigozhin also spoke from exile in Belarus, claiming he was not trying to overthrow Putin's regime. He said his march was a protest against those who'd made enormous mistakes in Russia's war on Ukraine. He released an 11-minute voice recording on social media where he claimed to be trying to protect Russia by showing its poor domestic defences. And he said he retreated because he didn't want bloodshed. Шли для демонстрации своего протеста, а не для свержения власти в стране. But a leak from UK security sources has now revealed that Russian intelligence threatened the families of Wagner leaders before the retreat. The deal struck by Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko was meant to see Prigozhin given immunity from charges of inciting rebellion. But there are reports that Russia's security service, the FSB, still have their sights on the Wagner leader. One politician has said traitors should be shot, and Prigozhin has been branded a traitor on Russian television. There is now speculation about a leadership transition from Putin. I don't think anybody truly knows because you don't know whether there are people internally who realise that his days are almost gone and it's time to transition. Now, that could be an orderly transition. Uh, he could dig in. Uh, we just don't know the level of support that remains around him. Uh, all you can hope is that he's deposed soon uh, and that there's stability uh, brought to a country at some point. But as we've seen in Ukraine, uh, the actions there of President Putin have been unpredictable, uh, they've been bloody, and uh, he's, he's a very vicious character. 
And The Australian's foreign editor Greg Sheridan today writes that Putin's invasion of Ukraine has shown his spectacular strategic misjudgment, his staggering failure to understand the true capabilities and limits of his own military. He also writes that Prigozhin may be even more volatile and unstable than Putin. Sheridan says... All the civilised world hopes that the increasingly erratic rule of Vladimir Putin is coming to an end in Russia. It's very unclear who would replace him. The Evgeny Prigozhin, the ultra-nationalist, ultra-violent leader of the Wagner mercenary group, should stage such a brazen rebellion against Putin shows that the dictator has lost a lot of control. But as the Australian Strategic Policy Institute's Dr Malcolm Davis pointed out last night on this program, there are no better alternative leaders to Putin, no good options, as he so succinctly put it. I just want to ask, Prigozhin's not a better option for a, a Russian dictator than Vladimir Putin, is he, or, or, or is he? No, definitely not. Uh, there are no uh, good options there to replace Vladimir Putin. There's no one on the scene... Uh, that would be essentially friendly to the West. They're all nationalist hardliners that are probably in many respects worse than Putin in terms of their willingness to escalate the war in Ukraine.